Hey folks, so let's discuss and unpack the full moon lunar eclipse in Gemini happening on the 30th of November 2020. So as usual for these videos, I'm off camera and doing this as a screencast so you can follow the chart and have a better visual appreciation of the configuration of the full moon. So what you're looking at is the chart for the Gemini full moon lunar eclipse happening on November 30. So let's see if we can work our way into this. All right, so we know that a lunar eclipse happens only at the full moon when the sun and the moon are opposite each other. So uh, astronomically, in basic terms, what happens is that the Earth's shadow would block the sun's light, which would otherwise be reflected off the moon. So this particular eclipse on the 30th is what is known as a penumbral lunar eclipse so it would be much more subtle than a partial or full lunar eclipse because only the more sort of diffuse outer shadow of the earth known as the penumbra would fall on the face of the moon so you would have to be quite observant to notice so that is the more astronomical perspective so this a penumbral eclipse, more difficult to observe, more subtle, falls in the sign of Gemini. And Gemini has to do with the very act of noticing, of observing, the act of perception. So we have a subtle eclipse here in the sign of Gemini, perhaps beginning to kind of cue us into this idea of training the mind to be a keen observer of more subtle realities. Astrologically now, this eclipse on the 30th means that we are transitioning into eclipses along the Gemini Sagittarius axis and this is the opening of the first set. So as the nodes are in Gemini Sagittarius until 2022, we will be having eclipses along the Gemini Sagittarius sign pair. And as we mentioned in the astrology of November part two, eclipses would be high points that would punctuate the journey of the nodes being in Gemini Sagittarius. So we would have the astronomical perspective, which says this is what is happening in the sky and the astrological perspective, which says, well, this is what it means. So the astrological perspective invites us into a deeper contemplation of meaning. So perhaps astronomically, this would be a fairly inconspicuous eclipse. It's nothing to write home about uh, in terms of the physical phenomenon of it. But in astrological terms, it would be a gateway again, plugging us into the lessons and themes that are inherent in the transit of the nodes in Gemini Sagittarius. And we dedicated a video on the channel to discussing some of the nuances and themes of the nodes falling along the Gemini Sagittarius axis. So I'll link that on screen and I'll put that in a pinned comment below the video. But in broad terms, as we mentioned previously in recent videos, the Gemini Sagittarius axis is the axis of perception and perspective, the axis of thought and belief, and how the mind would put its experience into a larger framework of comprehension and understanding. All right, so what do we have here? We have the sun at eight degrees Sagittarius opposite the Gemini moon at eight degrees of the sign. And when we look to the ruler of this full moon event, we find Mercury in Scorpio. So, the Sagittarius sun stands across from the Gemini moon, a configuration which invites us to think about the perceptions, Gemini, which are born out of the deeper architecture of belief, Sagittarius, that we individually and collectively hold. So as we believe, Sag, so we perceive, Gemini. So we have a theme here, so important, so necessary, so practical. So this Gemini full moon on deeper levels would support an overall process of coming into more conscious recognition and observation of the beliefs that you hold. 
So the full moon announces itself in the sky. So we look up and we see it. It's quite conspicuous. It's in your face. And so full moons in general hold within them this idea of what is being brought to our awareness for us to look at, to examine. So this Gemini full moon on deeper levels invites us into keener, sharper awareness of the fruits, the fruits of our own beliefs. In other words, if my deepest beliefs about the world impact how I experience my reality and what I experience in my reality, then the Gemini full moon would invite us to think about how certain uh, concrete situations, experiences and events in my external world reflect as the moon reflects the sun, how these external events reflect my deepest inner beliefs. So how is what is showing up in my external world, the things in my face, the things I can see, how are these related to the inner patterns of belief that I hold? And then as a kind of offshoot of that, we're saying that we have the chance not only to examine the beliefs that we hold, but also the perceptions that arise out of those beliefs. So as human beings, we are endowed with, let's say, a self-reflective capacity. So we can think about the nature of our own thoughts, our own perceptions. We can use our minds to examine the contents of our mind. We can use our mind to examine the mind itself. So this is really the basis of rationality when we think about it. So as human beings, we have the freedom to say, well, as I examine the contents of my own mind, I realized that a certain perception or thought I had was faulty or erroneous, not good, not right, not correct. So I'm going to change my mind. So we gave this example uh, in the astrology of November part two. So let's use it again. So I believe my father is insensitive and uncaring. I believe he doesn't love me. And because I believe this, I perceive his actions in this light. So we see the link between our beliefs, the archetypal domain of uh, Sagittarius, and uh, the link between that and what we perceive, Gemini's domain. So I perceived that my father intended to be hurtful when he said X or Y or Z to me yesterday because I believe he doesn't really love me. So the full moon lunar eclipse, as we said, is presided over by Mercury in Scorpio. So this would support the depth of perception required to get to the heart of the beliefs and perceptions that you hold. It would support the idea of really taking a deeper look, especially a deeper look into the unhealed emotions and wounds, the unhealed emotions and wounds, Scorpio, which impact how we perceive, uh, that's Mercury, and the Mercury Gemini matrix. So the act of perception is governed then by Mercury and its corresponding sign, Gemini, the Mercury Gemini matrix. But there's also another suggestion here with Mercury in Scorpio. It's the imperative to release, to let go of, to allow to die, to transmute the unhealed emotions that predispose us to having faulty perception. So have you ever looked back into your past and realized that perhaps there were other ways of viewing or interpreting a situation or event? So let's say that a relationship between you and a friend broke apart or broke down. So perhaps with the benefit of time and maturity, you are able to realize that there were errors in your own judgment, perhaps mutual errors of perception between you and your friend, which resulted in the friendship breaking down. So perhaps unhealed emotional patterns held by both you and your friend cause both of you to interpret each other's actions in a certain light and that resulted in a breakdown of the friendship. So you are both reacting to each other's, uh, let's say, pain, body and wounds which clouded all sense of perspective and clarity. So your pain body, your wounds made you have certain beliefs, Sagittarius, operating at the template level, which in turn made you perceive Gemini 
so which made you perceive each other's actions in a certain light so mercury in scorpio presiding over this full moon symbolically representing the invitation to take a deeper look so the invitation to become aware of and to heal the emotions which result in perceptual errors and as we look closer here we see that mercury is dancing in a sextile with pluto jupiter and saturn so uh, mercury there to mercury in scorpio to pluto jupiter and saturn so the transformation pluto of perception mercury that comes with maturity and the passage of time saturn so transformation which produces more wisdom jupiter so we getting some rain here in the background i hope it's not too loud but the rain is beginning to fall we have been having some sort of um a few thunderstorms here in the caribbean so i'm hoping it's not too loud so through wiser jupiter and more mature eyes, Saturn, mature Saturn, my perception, Mercury, is transformed, Pluto. So perhaps you may take the invitation at this full moon to go back into the vault of your own mind, to take a deeper look at what you have going on in your own mind relative to certain events, relationships, people, to see whether these perceptions and beliefs that you hold are in need of transformation and healing. So perhaps as the full moon triggers certain planets in your chart, perhaps it would invite you to take a deeper look at the dimensions of life that these planets represent. So for example, if the full moon triggers your Venus, it may prompt you to think about the perceptions and beliefs you hold uh, in respect of your relationships and how these uh, perceptions and beliefs might need transformation. So you may see in the Venus department of your own life, you may see some of your beliefs and perceptions reflected back to you in order for you to transform and transmute them. Now, the astrological moon, from a natal perspective, has to do with the inner self-image. So in basic terms, how I feel about myself. It has to do with the fundamental way in which we respond to all sorts of stimuli in our reality. People, places, situations, events. So the full moon in Gemini brings into sharper focus the link between how we perceive Gemini and the nature of our emotional response moon so how we perceive Gemini and the nature of our own internal self-image so how we feel internally about ourselves the moon so we have this full moon as we said presided over by Mercury in Scorpio which helps us to tune into our deeper perceptions, the perceptions which are absorbed into our inner psyche and which impact our internal self-image, how we feel about ourselves. So the question is again, how might these perceptions need to be transformed? Scorpio. So Mercury in Scorpio, the transformation of perception through processes which heal the emotional body and processes that help to restore the internally held self-image. Now, there's something else here which we alluded to in the beginning as we blend the idea of the full moon with the eclipse. So, as we said, full moons bring things to our attention. We confront the things brought to our attention. So they are conspicuously in our faces, just as how we see the full moon up in the sky. So the moon phases symbolically describe phases of the inner psyche, which is something that was much more acutely understood in different times on the planet. So the moon was understood to be a mirror of the movement of consciousness. It was understood that there was a symbiotic relationship between the phases of the inner psyche and the phases of the moon. So in different lines of time on the planet, let's say in realities that would look very different from the reality that we currently inhabit now, this basic dance between the inner psyche and the dance of the moon, this basic dance between the inner psyche and the movement of the moon 
was much more viscerally understood. And not just understood, but the dance of the moon through her phases was much more consciously participated with. So the moon was understood as giving basic direction to the activity of the inner psyche. A bit of a tangent there. But yes, blending the idea of the Gemini full moon with the idea of the subtle penumbral eclipse. So the interplay between what is obvious, full moon, and what is more subtle, penumbral eclipse. So with a penumbral eclipse, only, as we said, only the more diffuse outer shadow of the earth would fall on the face of the moon. And this is a collective theme that we're navigating. There is what is obvious at surface layers of perception, what is apparent, what's in your face. But then there are the more subtle dynamics that we have to sharpen up our perception in order to be able to see the things that require us to pay keener attention. So this is a challenge of our time when we are bombarded with so much data. So cultivating an acute perceptual ability, the strength of Gemini, to be a keener observer so that we are able to see what is more subtle. So how to not fall into the shadow of Gemini, distracted on focused perception, hopping from here to there, easily entertained, but not substantively informed. So how not to fall into the shadow of Gemini, but to harness Gemini's acute qualities of perception and keenness of observation in order to see more. So these are a few things to think about and really chew on at this full moon lunar eclipse. A few things to wrap your mind around, not just at the collective level, but at the personal level. So what in my own life or where in my own life do I need to think about my own beliefs and perceptions and correcting those, healing the emotions that uh, feed into erroneous beliefs and perceptions? And how does this operate to on the collective level? And the idea of cultivating a sharp perception to see what is subtle. All right, so reminding you as usual that I'm available for private astrological counseling and teaching consultations and links to that are in the description box below where you'll also find links to uh, teaching content and resources, including my most requested aspects class. So wishing you an enjoyable full moon and until next time, talk soon. Bye.